Apex Music Group Podcast, I'm your host, Hotter. Here with Blossom Complex, the best producer on the East Coast. We got our special guest in today for the very first episode of the show, Lil Frieza. He's signed to the Ibex Music Group label. We're excited to have Frieza on. We hope you guys enjoy the show. Let's dive into the interview. Yo, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the very first Ibex Music Group Podcast. I'm your host, Hotter. MC extraordinaire straight from the east here with my boy blossom complex the best producer on this side okay. hey and we're here with my guest and close homie lil frieza signed to the label what's going on frieza hey not much man just happy to be here yeah man we're happy to have you thank you so uh yeah we're new to this whole fucking podcast thing um so if i mess this up do not be surprised my speaking is uh well, it's not great. It's not great. My rap's good, but my speaking's terrible. So anyway, we're going to try and dive into this. I want to make this as entertaining for you guys as possible. I want to help you dive into the personal lives of these artists and kind of explore what makes them do what they do and why they chose to go this direction, take this creative road through life, and uh, how they can contribute back to the culture and how the culture has helped contribute to their, uh, to their lives. So uh, we'll dive into this with a huge icebreaker question. This is very deep, very philosophical. Frieza, coffee, tea, or tequila? <laughs> and oh, why? what a question! Um, I gotta say, on the low, I prefer I prefer the coffee. You know, I gotta get yeah. <laughs> <I'll, laughs> fuck off. <laughs> All right, well, I you guess know, I'll put the tequila away. We ain't partying today. Uh, you know, Frieza likes his tequila once in a while. You know, right. <laughs> you gotta turn up someone. You gotta turn up sometime, right? That mean eleven thirty tequila. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, guess we probably shouldn't start that at 11.30. Woo-hoo! We'll save that for after lunch anyway. We'll get that lunch, that Tim Hortons <laughs> lunch break in, throw a little Baileys in with the iced coffee. and we'll The st- Irish Tims. <laughs> Goddamn right. Goddamn right. All right. So, uh, yeah, I mean, we're going to dive right in. Like I say, our big thing here is just kind of like chatting with people about uh, what got them into music, what they're working on. And what their biggest drives are. So for you, I'm going to hit you with the very cliche podcast question. What got you writing? When? Why? I don't know. For, like, I guess really what got me started was, you know, I'll, I'll, be, I'll keep it plain and simple with you. I'll keep it 100. It was, I heard Gucci Gang by Little Pump. Gucci and I was like, yeah, yeah, if this kid can write <laughs> the most basic <laughs> rap song i'm just saying here that's fair then almost right any <laughs> yeah hey shout out little pump <laughs> little pimp <laughs> no if anybody little if he pimp. can rap then i think anybody, then i was like you know what i can probably do it too so uh just one i don't know one day back at the old uh in the old back room of walmart fucking uh see blossom walking by and i was like hey you want to produce for us me and my homie uh celeb and uh, yeah, he hand me, handed me his business card and went from there. Yeah, showed up like hot summer day. Oh yeah, 36 degrees in a tiny room. Uh, for the record, back in the day, I had this not good studio. I was still living with like a roommate. <laughs> It was like a closet with blankets hanging up, nice. like stapled to the wall, damage deposit be damned. <laughs> and just Mike stood up there, two people like work in retail at the time show up and this dude, first thing out of his mouth, I'm expecting the worst. Like when you come from a small town and producing rappers, it's it's rather really good or the absolute worst thing you ever hear. <laughs> yeah. And dude comes in immediately like chorus catchy on time which is a blessing yeah like honestly talent just immediately showing yeah got that ring like a waterfall bud because you know i got that drip (laughs) yeah man and i remember listening to that the first time i heard your song that was uh was that order 66 it was order 66 by the galactic empire first time i heard order 66 I was working on a ship offshore Nova Scotia, sitting around fucking trying to download this shit on like <laughs> like Afghanistan cave Wi-Fi, <laughs> which apparently is shit. Um, I was like, I was literally looking at my phone buffering, and then at one point it just gave up. Yeah. Um, so the Wi-Fi <laughs> sucked. I spent like the whole afternoon trying to download this. And then I'm sitting there, I'm like, man, like this is my buddy from back in the day. I got to support this. Appreciate it. So... I'm loading it, and then I hear the chorus coming. It's like, ring like a waterfall because it's got that drip. And I'm like, oh, shit. Like, Frieza. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, I think I was still going by Matty Ice back then. Yeah, you were Matty Ice in the Galactic Empire. Yeah, we had, a lot, we had a lot of fun. We had a lot of fun with that, but uh, I don't know. I felt like I maybe took it a little more seriously than my partner did. No offense to him. He's probably going to be listening to this. <laughs> but, <laughs> that was fair, though, man. But that's you know, it, right? Not everybody no, at can the, contribute at the time, 100% at least. to this. Yeah, and I don't know. I just felt like I could go somewhere. I feel like I could go somewhere with it, you know? No, that's right. That's right. And you can't, like, and to anybody else who's listening out there, like, there is no shame in being, like, recognizing who's who's along for the ride and, yeah. like, who's putting that work in, you know what I mean? You got to yeah. surround yourself with a team that contributes yeah. to the career. And we're, we're still tight and all. We're still good buddies. I mean, I was actually just texting them a few minutes ago, but it's just, you know, it's sometimes you got to break off on your own. No, that's right. And, like, I met the dude on a couple occasions. Yeah. He's, like, he's cool as oh, shit, man. Oh, cool fucking dude. I love him. Cool as fuck. He got, he's like a brother to me. Yeah, no, that's right. That's yeah, it's, good. it's just some people can only contribute this, like, as a hobby, which is completely fair. Like, yeah. that's a valid form of expression. But, like, you got to be a certain kind of psychopath to be like, this is <laughs> now my job. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, when I wake you up every fucking morning. 9 a.m. <laughs> start every day. Yeah, man. We on that 9 to 5 out here. I worked retail where I slept longer than this <laughs> yeah so for those who don't know i'm only home half of the year and still monday to friday nine to five when i am home we're in the studio and uh i don't know blossom still talks to me so that's cool i drag him out here <laughs> like literally from like nine to five nine to nine yeah we've pulled we've pulled some 12 hours some 14 hours 14, I think, is our record right now. Yeah, we hit a 14-hour day. That was recording um, Feels Like Home with oh, Riley song. Urban. We hit 14 hours that day. Yeah, the end of, like, late off LP when you hear, like, Liam go, oh, it's only been 11 hours. That That's not, like, a lie. We were in the studio for 11 <laughs> hours at that point, and then we kept going. Yeah, we literally hit 11 hours a day and then continued to fuck around for about three Anybody who says Ibex doesn't put in the work, these, these dudes are putting in the work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, i really need to reassess what i'm doing with my life but uh yeah man all right well let's keep diving into some questions here so what is the biggest risk you've ever taken and how has it paid off it can be musically personally career-wise whatever honestly it was asking blossom to produce for us like that felt like such a huge ask and like actually getting in the booth for the first time yeah that can be intimidating like i ain't gonna lie i am somebody that has struggled with stage fright and anxiety over the years like it's not like i'm not i like the spotlight but i don't like the spotlight at the same time no that's fair so it's like that first initial like recording recording on a mic and like hearing it back and it's like oh fuck i actually sound like good like i, I can actually maybe take this somewhere like to me that was a, that was a big risk for me yeah. like just putting my putting my music out there like just putting myself out to the public and it's it, it seems to be paying off like people seem to be fucking with it so yeah if y'all fuck with it i'll keep putting more out no absolutely well it's like an intimidating thing right because like once you have like in the booth for the first time like looking down a mic it's like seeing a barrel of a gun pointed at you facts. <laughs> <laughs> facts. hearing way too much of yourself the entire time like i'm gonna put you a bit on blast but this is my way to get back at this no it's true <laughs> There's a certain, like the mics that we use currently are the most sensitive things in the world. Like you can hear a pin drop. So when I say Matt would come in, everyone has their own like studio thing. Some people smoke beforehand, do whatever. Matt goes hard on the ice, ice coffee. <laughs> hard. <laughs> Beginning of every session, Frieza pulls up ice coffee in hand. And from the mic, it sounds like lean because uh, yeah. you're just hearing yeah. the thing just shake and all that. All you hear is fucking ice cubes and liquid <laughs> rattling around. And you're like, wheezy. And it sounds, like, it sounds like a vibe. But then this burp comes out. And when I say I hear from the diaphragm all the way up, like I start recording mad. Like we weren't like that good of friends. No, we but. <laughs> When you hear that, it's like it's like ear to chest. Like there's a certain amount where it's like, I feel like I'm crossing a boundary here. Oh, I knew this will come back to bite me someday. <laughs> like clockwork. Yeah. Oh my fuck. Yeah, so when, when you hear those ice cubes rattling, you know what's going on. Yeah, it's you know it's what's coming. It's I got that in my cup. <laughs> so for people who don't know, uh Frieza. Like, when people are like, oh, yeah, well, this guy put me on, this guy got me rapping, blah, blah, blah. Like, Frieza literally got me rapping. Um, I used to run 
uh, co-run a, uh, like an entertainment business called uh, 72 Hours. Uh, rest in peace, Freezer. You got some ice or some iced coffee? Pour that shit out for the day. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, we'll do. <laughs> but no, I used to run this business and we were looking for like smaller groups and bands and, you know, individuals to perform because we sponsored parties. We rented bars and all this kind of stuff. And anyway, like I said, I was bobbing around the middle of the fucking ocean, found Frieza and uh, Celeb and the Galactic Empire. I was like, you know what? I could probably book these guys a gig and get them in on one of our events. So uh, we met up at like the Tim's in oh God, fucking that. Larry Utec. Oh, yeah. yeah. This is the first time I'd seen you in a few years. Like yeah. we were we were boys back in the day, but like yeah, yeah. I hadn't seen you in a few years, so we were chopping it up. Anyway, uh, a couple months pass and Frieza hits me up. And he's like, yo, like I know you were saying like you've been writing and whatever, and do you want to hop on a track with me? So I was like, fuck yeah. Anyway, we didn't have a place to record because like Blossom was saying, it was like, we can record in a fucking closet or we can record into a fucking like a dresser. Like we just need something to collect some sound because like this was some ghetto shit back in the day. And uh, so anyway, I'm like, well, fuck it, pull through. We recorded this song called Freeze a Bat. It's still it's one of my favorite songs, bro. Dude, I, we got to redo it because we're so much better now. Oh, 100%. But it was dope. Like, the beat was dope. Yeah, the verses were dope. Yeah, they're it's back just, and forth, too. The cadence has gotten a lot better since then. But, uh, yeah, like, so, like, when I say Frieza literally put me on, like, if you fuck with my stuff, you have nobody to thank but Frieza and Blossom. If you don't fuck with my stuff, I'll be under your bed later. Appreciate uh, that. <laughs> and look out for him. I'm just kidding. I'm not on that off my chest shit. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, man, I can 100% relate because when you hit me up with that, like, hey, do you want to hop on a song? Like, I felt that same feeling of like, oh, shit. <laughs> this is happening. Like, yeah. it's happening. I, yeah. And the weirdest atmosphere for that first session, too, because like, I'm getting in from like, I think I was working that day. I got in. And like Matt's like, cool, we're going recording. And I'm expecting like to go, I don't know, Bedford, maybe like around Quimpool, pull up downtown. Yeah. <laughs> Barrington Street. Straight on Barrington. Go up the sketchiest elevator known yeah. to man. Uh, yeah, that shit's questionable. <laughs> Me having like back in the day, I didn't have a good backpack. My backpack was like a literal one. Like the print of it was like a human back. Like it was hairy. Yeah, it was pack. a hairy back <laughs> backpack. <laughs> With like Honest to God, like 10 grand in gear in it. Yeah. Like, honestly, investment, not great. Hentai shirt on the first day. I remember one of the first things I ever said to Liam was, look, I'm not a degenerate. This is like an irony thing. I promise I'm not a weirdo. Yeah. That was a lie, however. Yeah. But two years later, I've come to find out that Blossom is indeed a degenerate, but just not for that reason. <laughs> it was unrelated to the hentai shirt. He's just as bad as I am. <laughs> Um, but yeah, no, that was, that was a fucking, that was an event. That was an event. <laughs> yeah, that was a lot of fun. Yeah. That was dope. Um, a lot of good songs were recorded up in that apartment. Yeah. Like the whole laid off LP, all of our features. The only thing from that album we didn't record in the apartment was the skits. Yeah. That was done in the RV. With you and me. Yeah. We recorded that. I had a fucking 1979 Dodge Mini Winnebago. <laughs> I think it was a tank, though. It was literally a tank. I could have driven that through Chernobyl and came out fine. Um, can we can we also just state on the record that the laid off LP had nothing to do with COVID? Like the concept behind it, that was an accident that yeah. COVID got brought in. I was like, laid off before COVID. I was doing that shit before it was cool. <laughs> Yeah, and like even like the dumb joke in like uh, the song meme where it's like like catching cops in Wuhan. We're like, ah ha ha, this is funny. And there's a worry that hey, when this album gets put out, no one's gonna know what we mean. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Well, there was a bunch of shit. Like I was like, oh, we're throwing a little references at this and that because people were like, oh, COVID's gonna be huge. And I was like, yeah, this is like the next Y two K. Like everybody just simmer the fuck down. Anyway, here we are. <laughs> two, like two <laughs> months later, and now we're, you know. Yeah, uh, I permanently have a line in my beard from my fucking masks. Shout out and, COVID. Yeah, shout out, <laughs> shout out to my homie COVID. Fuck you. <laughs> Yo, what's up, everybody? So one of my favorite things to do on this podcast is kind of shout out some local talent, highlight some local releases, and keep shit fresh. So every week, what we're gonna do is kind of do like a local roundup. Uh, this being the first episode, totally new concept to you totally kind of new concept to me because i had a lot of time to prepare to do this so what how, how we're gonna do this is basically start out by being like oh this and that and this is the song this is the artist and i'm gonna give you a little blurb about them uh, and tell you why you should go check him out 
So first right off top of the list today, Good Morning by my homie Bad Fish out in Truro. Um, Bad Fish has been putting in some serious work. If you haven't seen any of his stuff, you gotta go check it out, man. His, uh, his latest album, The Process of Progress, just dropped earlier this month. It's phenomenal. Good Morning is one of my favorite tracks off that album, and uh, you gotta check it out. Uh, second on this list, we got Industry Plant by Cult Child. I might know a couple of the individuals involved in Cult Child. Um, Industry Plant is their first song. Uh, within two days of it going live, it saw well over a thousand streams, which is phenomenal for, you know, uh, their first release as a group. Cult Child is formed up of Blossom Complex, Frantic, and Kid Coffin, all local artists. Blossom Complex, you know I've worked with that individual on the auto occasion. Number three on the list, some douchebag named Hotter dropped a song this week. Million featuring Lil Frieza. Uh, that Lil Frieza guy, you know, he's got some talent. He's got some talent. I'll give it that. It's a pretty hype track. I would recommend going to check it out. But if you don't want to, I won't be upset. Hotter, on the other hand, he might be upset. So go check that one out. Trust Issues is the new EP by my homie Brizzle, a.k.a. AB Instrumentals. So go check that out. <laughs> the whole project is dope. Um, quality is on lock as always. And number five on our list this week is hashtag BLM by Tachichi featuring Scratch Bastard and Jamila. Um, we just blasted that song on repeat a few times in the studio and felt that it would be a shame to not put it on this week's local roundup. Um, I can't even go into giving a description about the song that would do it justice. So you really got to go see it for yourself. The, the title really gives you a good idea what it's about. But uh, each of those artists really delivered prime examples of, uh, of, of, of why they are in this game and exactly what kind of level of storytelling that they can bring to it and uh, really showcase some phenomenal skill. So anyway, guys, that was this week's Local Roundup. I promise to get better at talking to you guys. But in the meantime, go check out those artists and uh, stick around for this interview. All right, well, let's dive into your discography here. So, man, tell us about some of the shit that you've got rolling up. Like, what's your... I could go into detail about it, but I really want to hear your take on it. Well, your big plan. for starters, Hotter and I got a really dope track dropping Friday produced by yours truly here, Blossom. It's true. Million. That's going to be a fire song. I can't wait for y'all to hear it. Yeah, it's, it's going to uh, be dope. It is going to be dope. I promise you song of the fucking summer. I hope so. I hope so, man. I hope y'all fuck with it as much as we do. Yeah. Um, and then we got a summer pack rolling up probably at the end of the month. I think that's what we're shooting yeah, for. End of the month. Not confirmed, but we're we're shooting for that. Yes, capsule collection, like you said. More of like a summer, like you said, TikTok kind of vibe. Like yeah. just something you can vibe to, you know. And then we got some real hard aggressive shit dropping soon too. Hotter on one of those. Yeah. That's something I've never done before. Some real scream rap, like fucking just some real aggressive shit. I can't wait for y'all to hear that one. Actually, <laughs> I'm a little scared when I listen to it, not gonna lie. Yeah. <laughs> That's a different side of me that not many people see. Yeah, you just see Frieza driving through traffic. That song comes on. Yeah. <gasps> oh, I scared myself. <laughs> yeah. Facts. <laughs> but tell me about like this um the capsule collection. What what got you thinking you wanted to go? Tell me what a capsule collection is. And what influenced you to go that kind of route? Yeah, it's to me, it's just a uh, like it's whereas we're branching into so many different sounds, it's it's a good way to group them together and like kind of not like try to jam everything down your throat at once. Yeah, <laughs> we're just we're, I'm trying to like let it let it breathe a little bit, you know, like put a, put a couple songs out here or there that kind of fit together, like fit the same genre together. Like I don't know, like. Uh, Basically, what you were saying, your idea behind the uh, capsule collection was, was it's kind of cool. The concept is basically to be like, you could drop a bunch of singles, but then people think like, oh, freezes all over the place. What's, you know, what's this single? You got a, 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 a single in like the subgenre of like horrorcore, and then you're over here doing like hyper pop. It's like, man, where's he? he seems really unsure in his career. But your capsule collection idea is fucking sick because you're not doing a full EP. It might be two, three songs. Yeah. But you stylize the whole project towards that subgenre. Yeah. So then you get to kind of play around with different ideas. It's like fucking Quentin Tarantino. Every one of his movies exists in the same universe, but they're all totally different. And at yeah. the end of the day, he's still one of the greatest directors ever. 
That's a great. Um, that's a good way to put it. You yeah, know, so you're the fucking Quentin Tarantino of <laughs> rap. <laughs> I, I'd no, like I'm to saying. eventually be known as that. <laughs> that'd be pretty. That'd be pretty legendary. Um, not there's not a lot. There's not violence in all my songs, but <laughs> <laughs> we ain't killing Bill. <laughs> yeah, no, but this it, one time in Ibex. <laughs> yeah, it's no. It's a great way to diversify, to diverse, to make the music more diverse. You know, like and just just set, just set them apart from each other. You know, yeah. Because like I said, I just I don't want to be boxed into one sound. Like I want to have very different sounds all over like all over the place. Like obviously, when you get an album, like it'll probably be somewhat along the same sound, but. Yeah. I mean, it might it might diversify a little bit, but you know, like like you said, with this capsule collect with these these capsules, it's like you get a different sound each time to keep yeah. you on your toes, and it keeps things interesting. Yeah, well, that's it, man. Like, even if you look back at my music, you're everywhere's on that shit from fucking skits to R and B to like some light rock rap kind of stuff. <sighs> that R um, that R and B track still remains my one of my favorites. Downtime, downtime was surprisingly so like when i dropped the laid off lp my marketing my promotion i was still super green to everything at that point man i just figured to put music out and next thing you know like fucking jimmy ivine was calling me <laughs> yeah um and uh but yeah that's not the case contrary to popular belief don't dive into music thinking that's the case but when i launched my terrible fucking marketing platform <laughs> somehow downtime which was like one of the least marketed songs i literally i i put effort into a couple of the singles and that was about it and downtime still managed to be the most streamed song for the longest period of time and people really fuck with that and i was surprised too because i was like shit like all right maybe i gotta pay some more attention to this this side of the genre um shout out my homie dylan he was probably kind of for a lot of those streams yeah he really he fucked that song heavy well, shout out to you dylan shout yeah. out to you my dude pickle man what's up <laughs> yeah 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 um it now that that honestly remains one of my favorite songs because i remember getting the text from you after school one day i think i just finished writing an exam and you're like yo we got an r&b track come over and i'm like yes okay <laughs> i remember that because you you came on the ferry yeah and we walked down and met you yeah me and Blossom were sitting in like the living room of my girlfriend's yeah. old apartment. Mice running around the fucking floor. One light bulb kind of half burnt out. Industrial <laughs> fan blowing the entire Oh, time. yeah. <laughs> Massive restaurant fan. Literally outside the window. Like you looked out and this thing was looking back at you like angry. And uh, what was... It was the weekend dropped an album yeah. at that time. Uh, mm -hmm. The weekend just dropped uh, Heartless. Heartless. I was listening to it. I was bumping it hard because like, hey, yeah, Metro Boom. And like, I was showing you how, you know, producers are kind of everywhere. I was like, Metro yeah. Boom just did a song. And you just look and with the big swagger and cockiness of any rapper, like, I can do that. <laughs> yeah. Make R&B right now. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. 30 seconds later, you had a dope beat cooked up. And I'm like, oh, shit. All right. I should probably write. Um, so me... And me and every little ounce of creativity in my body tapped into my uh, inner melodical side. And we cooked that up. And you know what? I was actually, that was one of the first times in my my career as a recording artist that I was actually like, shit, like I actually like the sound of my own voice this time. Auto-tune might have played a large part in that, but I really liked the sound of it. And then Frieza came through, and I was like, all right, this is like a full-ass song. Like, this is actually dope. Yeah. Yeah, we did that that day. Then we also did uh, the chorus on Tear Him Down. Mm. We brought yeah. For Tear Him Down, we had this kind of rock Ford F-150 commercial sounding song. Yeah. And we're trying to, like, get a chorus down, and we're like, Matt's, Matt's the dude, and this yeah. bring everyone in. And us just stuck for, like, 30 45 minutes the entire time it took us to record like downtime stuck on a chorus. oh yeah we're all sitting there looking at each other like a bunch of fucking idiots <laughs> and like because like if you need a if you need a hook or you need a chorus like you call frieza if anybody's listening right now and they need a feature you hit that ibex website you call us up we'll make sure we book you frieza just listen to the hooks i got coming that's right that's all that's you got right but uh yeah, I was like, man, f fuck it, Frieza will have something. Like, I'm not even worried about it. Frieza came through. He was like, "What the fuck is this?" And I was like, "Well, <laughs> I rap about politics and global elites, and uh, I think I throw some shade at Epstein, and God. like I'm all over the place." And at the same point in time, like honestly, this is me like scrutinizing shit out of, out of that song. I had like a sinus infection when we recorded it, so it sounds fucked anyway. Um, but uh, we're looking at each other like, man, I don't know. Like, how do you, what kind of chorus do you write to this? 
And then Blossom's like, can I try something? <laughs> and like me and Freezer are exhausted by this point. Yeah. So we're looking at each other. We're like, fuck it. Just yeah. do what well, you gotta do. I don't do. even care anymore. <laughs> anyway, what you hear is what you got. We're there looking at each other like, where the fuck has this been at? <laughs> <laughs> It's one of those ones where, like, we had every intention of, like, re-recording it. But if you end up listening to that song, like, Freeze's vocals, background, layered in. To this day, that main vocal is me, still. The scratch takes are still there. It's also why I'm uncredited. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think if you go on and search the credits for it, you are in there in music and vocals. <laughs> so there you go. You have a vocal credit. There you go. Big leagues. Big leagues. Hey, everybody. It's Hotter. Welcome to our sponsor segment. Huge shout out to all the sponsors. And by all of them, I mean our number one, our bread, our butter, High Tide Apparel. If you guys haven't heard of High Tide, you've been under a rock. And if you've been under a rock, it means you're probably garbage on a shoreline that's going to get cleaned up by the wonderful people at High Tide. High Tide is an apparel company that is environmentally conscious and likes to create a lifestyle brand for the wearers to enjoy. Uh, we've been very fortunate to work with High Tide. We share some workspace with them. You can find High Tide Apparel online. Check out their socials on Facebook at High Tide Apparel, Instagram High Tide Apparel CA, and at their website HighTideApparel.ca. They've got some great merch. You got to check them out. And as always, we are looking for new sponsors and people to work with. So if you or somebody you know is able to sponsor the show, you are a company that would like to sponsor a small independent label, you'd like to sponsor this media group, you think we can benefit off each other, we would love to work with you. Hit us up by all means. Ibex Music Group on Insta, Hotter Music on Insta, Blossom.complex on Insta, or on Facebook, Ibex Music Group, Hotter Music, or Blossom Complex. Thank you to all of our sponsors. Back to the show. Stand by. Um, all right, come back to the capsule uh, collection one more time, and then we'll jump into our next segment. Um, I didn't have anything to do with this. I, I'm just, I'm just the label sugar daddy. But I want you guys to talk about the capsule collection, the artwork, and the idea behind the whole fucking like you started with the whole idea, and I just thought it was fucking cool. So go on, t- tell me a little bit more about that. Yeah. So the whole thing with the capsule collection is really you wanted each of these to be their own unique idea and really show this kind of summary vibe. And Matt, sorry for calling you a slur, but you are a, <laughs> but you are a gamer. What's up? <laughs> yeah, we don't use that slur very no. often, so just keep that one down. <laughs> full full pog champ over here. <laughs> uh, that's so, poggers. <laughs> 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 so, so the entire time we're just like, I decided, hey, let's like put a Game Boy on the cover and every single capsule collection you see, we're jumping a generation. So Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Advance SP just because it looks better than like the Game Boy Advance. Yeah. Then boom, DS. So every single Cows Collection, you're going to jump up a generation because we're getting more closer to like when we're eventually going to do the album drop. We're bringing you up to speed on what he's been up to, you know? Yeah. And just having all these unique ideas. And yeah, Caps Collection 1, nice little soft hummer pop thing. We got Tiernan Matheson coming on one of them. Yeah, who's also talented as fuck, and I can't wait to have him on here as a guest. Keep an eye out for him. Luckily, I know Perfect. I know how we can get a hold of him because his contract is sitting behind you. <laughs> <laughs> his phone number is on that shit. <laughs> you can't escape, Tiernan. I know where you live. I will find you. I will show up to your house on a four wheeler with the crossbow covered in camo. Reese can't protect you this time. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so, anyway. All, all hick threats aside, <laughs> um, I'm poorly equipped in the camo department right now. Anyway, I'm out here wearing fucking Jordan ones and some cargo shorts. Um, let's just appreciate all the fits here for a quick second. Yeah, we've got you Jordan ones, cargo shorts, the iconic look, the Nike hat, also the iconic look. Yeah, looking like you're about to raid the Capitol building. You know, pretty much, man. I'm. Uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, I I have that aesthetic that I shouldn't fit into hip hop, um, and yeah, <laughs> like there's the pairing here because we have that we have raid the Capitol building, then we have the embodiment of SoundCloud. We Pretty have, much, it's we, true. We have more gold chains than I can count. <laughs> <laughs> like, if I you can only th- count to three, so I like my fucking- three. <laughs> If you went through the TSA, 
it would just sound like a Gangsta Girls mixtape. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> We've got Boston Red Sox had champion everything. Yes, sir. Jordans again. Yep. But like, those are uh, what ha- what collection are those from? So I got the I got on right now the Jordan. I think the Jordan mid Jordan one mids. Uh, oh, what's the name? L.A. to Chicago. So they uh, they start off like the L.A. Lakers colors, and then you can rub the paint off, and uh, they turn to Chicago Chicago, Chicago Bulls colors. That's They're a collab cool. with Nike SB. Yeah, if you look at the back of one of the shoes right now, like I know we don't have video here, but it's going red. I presume I am colorblind. They are, yeah. It can confirm. Third-party confirmation. <laughs> and then the weirdest out of the bunch where Hodder and I make no sense when we're together in any yeah, we fashion. We make zero sense. We look like we're estranged cousins or something that are forced <laughs> to be in like a family reunion. Because <laughs> this only similar thing is just a bunch of like just white beard, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Oh yeah, we walk through. We walk through public, and people are looking at you. And they're looking at me, and they look back at you. They're like, "Are you okay? Is he, is is he threatening you?" Like, like right now, we've got the headphones with the cat ears, the razor cat ears. Yeah, got the North Face shorts. Got the vaporwave shirt. A Herschel bag with two Beyblades and a TV remote in it, <laughs> and NMDs from the Japan pack. I I look like I've never experienced the touch of a woman. <laughs> oh my! God. I look like I'm going home for a body pillow. Oh you know? <laughs> going home to a body pillow. Yeah, we call this aesthetic birth control. <laughs> <laughs> I too love League of Legends. I'm dying right now. <laughs> Yeah, meanwhile, I stuck my crossbow in the back room of the studio because I wasn't sure if we were doing video for this. <laughs> oh my god! Just to like really set the scene of like how different this. Yeah, there's no explanation for what's going on here. Like, <sighs> this shit shouldn't work, but somehow it does better than any other team in the fucking East Coast. So, with the exception of like maybe Half Life and like Quake's team. This is like, you know, we got shit going on here. We got shit popping. So we're going to pop over to this next segment here now. Um, Blossom's going to do the Blossom Mix. We're going to fucking cook up some beats. I say we as if, like, I know how to use a fucking computer. <laughs> I don't. I learned what DAW means last week. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we're going to chop some shit up. And we're going to come back. Frieza, I want you to bring your A game, dude. We'll see what You're going to freestyle on this Blossom mix. Yeah. Blossom, you got a half hour to make the craziest fucking beat. Throw some, like, just change this shit up. We're going like, you know, like some sway in the morning shit. Shade 45. Shade 45. <laughs> Please don't sue me. All right, Frieza, welcome to the booth. Thanks for having me. So, what is your vibe today? We're going to get you in here to a live freestyle. We're going to cook up a beat for you in about a half hour. Okay, I like the sound of that. Yeah, what's your vibe today, man? I don't know. I'm feeling. I just want to spit some bars, you know, like something. Uh, I don't know. Like I've been really vibing with that Seen Green track by Nicki Minaj lately, the one with Wayne and Drake on it. You know, I just want to spit some bars. I see a bit of that gospel flip. A little bit, you know. Okay, I feel you. I just want to rap. Cool. All right, it's the booth. Ibex Music Group. What's up? It's your boy Freezer. Alright. Blossom. Sometimes we can get lost in this crazy world. The only thing that holds you down is that one girl. The one that treats you right, yeah. The one that treats you better. She brings the sun lead, she comes along and changes the weather. I've been down at below us, had the tears flowing. Heavy rain hits the petals and the flowers growing. The wind pushes us back and it just keeps blowing. It can turn our heart ice cold like it just started snowing. So I know what it feels like to be down. So bad it feels like you're six feet underground. In a dark room, yeah, it all makes no sound. Being deprived of my senses, fucking them out of bounds The moral to the story is the harsh time pass You'll catch them all one day and drop the blunt ash You'll have everything you want and some more cash Just take it slow, it's not a race, we don't have to go fast Woo! That was dope That was Lil Freeze in the booth Ibex Music Group That was our debut podcast, thank you for joining us Hit us up on socials I am Hotter Music Blossom Complex Lil Freeza. Thank you to our sponsors. And if you guys want to hop on this show, man, hit us up. Peace.